Today, I wanna to share with you all my favorite workflow tip for DaVinci Resolve. And this is especially useful if, like me, uh, a lot of the different videos you make have some repetitive elements. Now in this standard layout I have here, I have the mic I use just off frame. Um, the settings for recording that are always exactly the same. I have my camera right here. The settings for that are exactly the same. I have my lighting set up exactly the same. So there are a lot of basic processes in Resolve whether that's uh, color grading or uh, audio effects that I know I want to be the same in every YouTube video I make. But this workflow tip isn't just limited to, you know, those videos that are uh, production-wise identical. Even if you're creating diverse content, but you like a, a generic layout for your bins in the media pool, or you like starting with a certain number of timelines set to a specific different resolutions or frame rates, if there is any busy work that you find yourself doing almost every project just to get that project to like what you would consider a starting point, this will help you out. And this tip is living right here on my desktop. I have a single DRP file. Now this is a DaVinci Resolve project file. And the way this project file works might be a little different than what you're used to if you use project files from other software. DaVinci Resolve primarily uses a database system. I plan on making a separate video soon just about um, the database system and the different uh, project or timeline and archive files you can choose to export out of that. Uh, but for today, we're just looking at this. This is a project file that I made and I exported out of Resolve. But this is not what you might think of as like a live project file. If I load this into Resolve, which I will do now, it will launch Resolve and then it will look at that project file and load all the relevant information into a new project in my Resolve database. It'll ask you for a unique project name. So if I just type in like new YouTube, click OK. It will then import and load that project and I will be in uh, my normal project uh, layout. And before I get any deeper, I want to demonstrate. If I grab something like this image, just drop it on this timeline. If I save and then quit, I still have that Resolve project on my timeline. But now if I double click this again, it will not open the project I just made. This DRP is like a static reference to what I had originally saved out of DaVinci Resolve. So if I load this up, it will ask me again to create a new project name. So if I type in like new to click OK, it will load back in that same default set of settings and everything else I set up. But on this YT timeline, it's completely blank. Uh, that image has not yet been dragged to the timeline. But what's super exciting for us to know is that you can export this DRP at any stage in the production of your video. And what that means is that you can go through whatever initial steps that you do in almost every video you make, get to sort of this baseline version before you actually import the actual footage you're working on or anything else like that, and then choose to save out that project file and it becomes like a dream template for your specific scenario. If you appreciate videos like this, you should visit sterlingsupply.co. This is my website where you can download dozens of presets, plugins, and effects for DaVinci Resolve. Many of these presets are completely free. Several are paid premium products and website members also receive a bundle of those premium products along with exclusive extras like in-depth breakdowns of my newest presets. Why not check out my Layout Pro preset pack? Choose from either the V2 version or the new Layout Pro Blocks Pack to arrange up to 25 video clips instantly in frame. Completely fill the frame with Layout Pro Blocks or choose from advanced frame and drop shadow controls with Layout Pro V2. My ongoing work is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. You can see in my media pool, I have a certain number of bins. When I am creating a YouTube tutorial, a lot of times I will just hop into a project and I will create a work timeline. If I am developing a preset or testing an effect for a tutorial, a lot of times I will um, do sort of like pre-production or just like sketching out whether an idea is feasible in a work timeline. And then when I record the video showing that off, I will do that in a demo timeline. A lot of times this demo timeline is just a 1080 timeline um, because I, you know, I don't need all that visual information if I'm mostly showing off the UI and depending on the type of tutorial, if I'm doing like a really beefy tutorial, I don't want that processing in 4K uh, while I'm also recording. And then I have this YouTube folder with this main timeline where I will bring in the footage from that video I have recorded, most likely working on this demo timeline. And I also make my thumbnails in Resolve. Um, so I have a timeline for that with a lot of the assets I use in some of those thumbnails. And here it gets 
even more in depth. Now, default uh, bins and timelines, super cool. But the really cool stuff is living in this one YouTube timeline. Even though if I open this up, nothing is you know there on my timeline. If I click over to the Fairlight page, you might notice those eagle-eyed viewers of you that over here in my mixer, I already have some stuff going on in Dynamics and EQ. Like I said, my mic setup stays uh, pretty level video to video. And while Resolve does have some systems to you know, share audio presets between projects, if I apply those effects to a blank timeline, then I know that any clip I drag onto that timeline will have the processing I want. If you are unaware, in this Fairlight menu up here, you have the presets library, and this is an excellent way to save your EQ presets, dynamics plugins, and even global track presets. This is what I was using um, before I sort of migrated to this new system using this timeline project file workflow. I will demonstrate. If I add a new video track, I hop into this presets library, I come to global track presets, I select my audio one, which has, you know, these uh, EQ and dynamics on it. And if I click save new, it's giving me a pop up because I, I already have a preset on this. But if I click save new and I just call this like new, I will click OK. And if I then click audio two, uh, deselect audio one, audio two, and select that new preset, if I click apply, watch over here. Oh, I also get a pop up because of stereo and mono stuff, but if I change that, then hey, all of those, all of that dynamics and EQ, I even have some plugin stuff going on here, has been perfectly copied over to audio two. Um, I'm going to also control Z that because I don't want that in this instance, um, but audio presets can be sort of like waiting on your track before you drag in any footage. And the same can be done for color. I'm gonna hop back to the edit page and take a recent video I did. I will just uh, pull in my little folder of raw video here and walk through the basic steps I would do if I were making a video. I have my one screen recording, which also has my main mic recording. Um, it has a second audio track that sometimes I use if I need to split um, this mic from my system audio. I have the main uh, video from my camera, which has its own reference audio. I will select all those. Uh, auto align clips based on waveform. That should happen pretty quick. Yeah, just a small nudge there. And then I'm gonna hop into the color page just for this one sort of face camera. Now, you might know that you have this power grade window over here. And anytime you've created a color grade, you can right click in this window and go to grab still, and it will add that to whatever folder you have selected over here. I created this one here. Um, right now, this color grade is absolutely empty, so I will delete that. But I have a saved power grade here. And especially since I haven't started cutting this clip yet, um, I could drag this right onto this single clip, but I like working with groups instead. Just to demonstrate, I will come in here and let's say I have just decided to start cutting this up beforehand. If I hop over to color, now I have all of these separate clips. I will even disable that main screen recording clip. And again, I could um, apply this grade to these individual clips, but if for whatever reason, I need to go in and I change something in one of those, um, this is still only living on the individual clip. But if I get rid of all of that, what instead I'm going to do is select all of these clips, right click and add into current group. Now, if you do this, you might only see new group, but I have current group because while I was making my DaVinci Resolve project template, I created a blank group and already added the color grade I know I wanted on this video clip. So when I add to a current group, if I change this viewer here from clip to group post clip, I can see um, that simple color grade is now live on all of these clips. And if for whatever reason I needed to tweak that, it will tweak that in all of them. But if I'm editing a tutorial, all I need to do is take that one click into the color page, right click, um, add into current group. And because I had previously created that group, even if you drag a video clip onto a timeline, um, create a new group with that clip and add this power grade to that group, even if you then delete that video clip, it still is stored in Resolve that that group exists and that that grade is uh, living inside that group. And those are the big features I use, these Fairlight presets and this color preset. Um, you could go much further. These individual timelines are completely blank, but you could already have things living on these timelines as part of this preset. Say you have an intro or an outro or a music track that you use in every video clip. You can already have those assets on your timeline waiting for you. Now, it's important to remember that this project file 
does not actually include that media. Something like my uh, thumbnail little folder here. I just have a few images in my Fusion composition there. But it's important that the location on my hard drive um, that originally pointed to where these files live doesn't change. If you want to create a project template like this that maybe you could send to someone else or use on a different computer, uh, maybe you should look into like a DaVinci Resolve archive file. Again, uh, I'm going to talk about that more in an upcoming video where I uh, go through those distinctions. But especially if you are in this YouTube content little space, <laughs> having one little icon on your desktop that you can double click to get up and running and handle a lot of the busy work that might take up a little bit of time project to project, I think is pretty cool. I did originally see this from friend of the show, Mr. Alex Tech, and it's something I've loved talking about ever since. Like you saw, even just bins and timelines, this can be valuable, but add on those Fairlight presets, add on color presets you can store in groups and anything else else you want living on a timeline. And I think it is one small uh, part of the possibility in Resolve that lots of users don't know about or maybe they forgot about and they just don't touch. I even knew about this for a while and just wasn't taking advantage of it. But now that I have it up and running, I think it's pretty cool. Hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.